Saturday, March 4th from 4 to 7 p.m. We are going, they're going to be doing a barbecue dinner fundraiser for Caleb Watson and family. All proceeds will go to Caleb's medical expenses again Saturday, March 4th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Coca-Cola Warehouse on the 105 Bypass. This dinner includes barbecue, beans, slaw, a roll, and dessert with a drink for $10. Then I have one card here. It says, thank you for, the, for the, all the kindness you bring to the world. We would like to thank you for your support, love, and kindness on May 18th when our world was shaken. Your donation to his funeral expenses was, real, was a really big help. The plants we received were beautiful. We thank you and, and love each one of you from the bottom of our hearts. Dennis and Janice Johnson. And then we have another one here that says, Your concern has meant so very much and will always be remembered. Dear church family, thank you, so, thank you for the beautiful floral arrangement you sent for the service of Betty Jackson. She loved the flowers, and this was the perfect way to honor our loved one. With gratitude, the family of Betty Jackson. That's everything that I have. If there's anything else. If not, remember on Saturday, March the 4th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Coca-Cola Warehouse, the, the, the fundraiser, and uh, Doug, uh, I guess the choir can come on up. Been walking the same old road miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lie. You've been trying to feel the same old holes inside. But there's a better life. There's a better life. You got pain. He's a pain taker, and if you feel lost, he's a way maker, and if you 
need freedom to save it. He's a prison shaking Savior. You got chains. He's a chain breaker. so much and it was just like an overwhelming feeling of love and compassion and just the power of love is so strong and then you go on and you go on and it just gets harder and rougher and but God never promised the cross wouldn't be heavy but he's right there beside us through every bit of it and I know that we're all going through storms right now and I felt strong to do this song this morning if you're going through something this morning, just let it go. Give it to God. Don't let anxiety or depression get you down. Anxiety is worrying about the future and depression is worrying about the past. Worry about the right now. Take no thought for tomorrow. But I was sure by now reached down and wiped our tears away, stepped in and saved the day, but once again, I say amen.
Good morning. Got your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter number two. Or chapter number three, I'm sorry. Chapter number three. Got a little bit of reading, chapter number three, yep, in the book of Ephesians. Do got a little bit of reading to do this morning. I've been studying. I told Jim I'm getting three, four, five messages a week. Four of them's for me, one of them's for you. I just got to figure out what's what. Uh, the thought the Lord gave me this morning. I think I've got notes laying in every room. I hope I can just hit the just hit the points God wants me to this morning and maybe something we look at for a, a while. And we need it to so bad. I don't want to miss out on God, do you? I want to be aware. I want to recognize what God puts in front of me, that's Him. I want to seize the opportunity to be in His presence. I want to grasp the power that He's promised me. And I want to use it to the fullest potential that I can. If that happens, things will look up. Amen. Are we all right this morning? Wave at me if you're all right this morning. Make it get her eyes straightened out. Come up here a little while. And fix it. Amen. How many of you found your place? Ephesians number chapter number three. I'm going to have to start at the first to get to where I want to go, but... Just listen, the Lord will help us here. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, raise your hand. Praise the Lord, this is so good. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me, listen, to you word. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore 
in few words. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. How many of you are saved? Raise your hand. Lay your hand right here on your heart. Somewhere inside of there lies the mystery of Christ. Boy, it's a mystery. I'm going to talk about him here in a minute. He used to be an old man. Lived inside of here. But by the grace of God, when he saved me, there's a circumcision of my soul, and that old man was pulled out, replaced by a new man in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen. Which in other ages was not known, made known, under the sons of men, but is now revealed unto you, under his holy apostles and prophets, by the Spirit. Say Spirit. 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 Big deal. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Glory to his holy name. And of the same body, and partakers of his promise, in Christ by the gospel, made possible by the cross. Amen. Amen. We are partakers of His promise in Christ by the gospel. The promise. I'm going to talk to you today a little while in just a minute on the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God. Man, this will scare a lot of Baptists plumb to death. About got me run off a few times. But I ain't holding back. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit of God. That is the promise. Bless His holy name. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by effectual working of His power. Man, that's so good. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, in this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Lord, help us today. I want to preach to you on the richest man that ever lived. Amen. The unsearchable riches of Christ. I was sitting at a restaurant the Friday, eating a meal and... I wasn't doing anything special. I, wasn't, I hadn't prayed a special prayer. I hadn't done anything uh, out of the ordinary. And there was a lady that was sitting beside of me. And she was eating, her and her husband. And she looks over at us out of the blue, Doug. And she said, you're a pastor, aren't you? I wasn't dressed in a suit. I didn't have a tie on. And I said, uh, yes, ma'am, I am. And she looked at me and she said these words. And she spoke some kind of blessing on me that's never been spoken. I receive it in the name of Jesus this morning. She had the power and anointing of the Holy Ghost of God. Amen. But she looked at me and she said these words. And I want you to listen very closely this morning. Lita, she said, the Holy Spirit does not lie. Amen. She didn't blink. She didn't waver. She didn't frown. She didn't laugh. She looked at me with the seriousness of God. Amen. And she said, honey, the Holy Spirit. Spirit does not lie. Let's rewind back to the morning, early morning hours. Uh, Miss Reba was praying and studying in the Word of God, and the Spirit of God was moving, and God laid on my heart to give a man a word. And I'll tell you, it's a very serious thing if you're willing to tell somebody God said, or what he God told me. You're walking on thin ice, honey, if you're not in the will of God, amen, and not in the truth of God, you shouldn't say that. There's a lot of prophesying, but there's a lot of prophet lying, amen, out there in today's world. But God showed me plain, amen, that morning. And I, I hesitated. I, I quenched the spirit, amen. And I could not do it. I came here just a couple hours later. I got down and that same Holy Ghost came by my way. And He said the same words, Paige. And He said, tell Him. And still I did not say it. But when I sat down at that table, amen, and that woman looked at me and she said, the Holy Spirit does not lie. There was a boldness come up in my heart. Brown, and I knew that when God gave the word, it was the word. Amen. 
Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning, the Holy Spirit does not lie. Amen. Now the Holy Spirit, let's understand who He is. You've got God the Father seated in heaven. You've got God the Son that came to earth and lived 33 and a half years. Amen. Servant. And you've got the Holy Spirit. Now we hear about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament at times. It would come upon men such as Samson and other men in the Bible. And brother, they'd do great things through the Holy Spirit. But He would kind of come and kind of go. But when Jesus came, amen. John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit page from his mother's womb. But when Jesus walked in the anointing after He was baptized, hear me this morning, by John the Baptist, then the Bible said that the Spirit ascended on Him like a dove. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. What's that mean, preacher? That means that God Himself sent the Spirit into His Son to walk and function under the power of the anointing of God. Amen. That His words and His actions and His healings and His miracles and the things He does done were controlled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now listen, you Christians, you are promised the gift, the, the, the empowering, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That means when you are born again, amen, the Spirit of God, the old man is took out and the new man is put in. I myself believe there's more to it than that. I believe there's an extra blessing that comes along. Believe what you want to. We'll get into that another day. That's for another time and another place. But let's believe right now together, amen, sister, that the Spirit of God comes into the Christian when he is saved. Amen. 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 That's what happened when you got saved. The old man was took out and the new man was put in. The Holy Spirit of God. Miss Reba, the part of God that He sent to indwell man. God promised us that this would happen. Now number one, I want to preach to you just a few minutes on truth. The Holy Spirit cannot lie. How many of you believe that? Now there's a lot of lying. Young people listen to me. Young girls listen to me. Boys will tell you lies. Men listen to me. Women will tell you lies. Your boss might tell you lies. Somebody out here in the world might tell you lies. The world is full of lies. But listen to what John uh, chapter number 14 says. Verse number 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Only one way you can love him and that is through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you all right this morning? How many of you got scared when you heard me say that uh, I was going to preach on the Holy Spirit this morning? Anybody get scared? Oh, Lord, what's the preacher about to do? Well, you've seen it before. Don't act surprised. Amen. Listen, what the Bible says, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father that He shall give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. That's from the day you're saved to the day that you die. Miss Betty, that means that through good times, bad times, hard times, easy times, this comforter that's inside of you is the Holy Spirit. Jesus said when He ascended into heaven, He would give you this as a gift. That gift, amen, that for the Christian is the Holy Spirit. Please listen this morning. Even the Spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Lay your hand back on your chest. Feel. I feel it beating. Miss Betty, he's in there. He's in there. Christians, he's in there. Look up here. If he's in there, you know it. There's not something as big as the Holy Spirit that can live inside of your heart. You, it feels so good you don't want to take your hands off, do you? You can, I just don't want to. Something as big as the Holy Spirit, Denise, when he comes in there, you know it. You know that he's in there. Amen. And He's always going to tell you the truth. That that's out of love. He's never going to deceive you. He's never going to lie to you. He's never going to mislead you. 
Danny, He's never going to confuse you. He's not going to send you in the wrong direction. He's not going to send you somewhere you shouldn't be. He's not going to play mind games with you. He's very transparent. He's very plain spoken. He lives by the... He's not going to contradict the Word of God. He is the Word of God. He is the very Word of God that somehow, when we get saved, comes inside of us to dwell. That's Him. That is the Holy Spirit. He is a comforter. He can be grieved. Hear me this morning. There's a simple verse in the Bible, Justin, that says, Quench not the Holy Spirit. When something's quenched, that means it's drawn up and it doesn't have the liberty to do what it needs to do. And Matt, the Bible says, To grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. To grieve not. Have you been grieved before? Miss Betty, I felt the very... Spirit of God in my chest be grieved before. I felt the, the, the very presence of God grieve inside of my heart. I felt it uh, get quenched up and grieved because of sin of other people and because of things that I've done. I felt liberty. The Bible said where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And let's look right here uh, just for a minute and, and I'll move on. But I want you to hear this so good. The Holy Spirit, we confuse it because we think that we can say God said or God will. God did. And honey, it better be by the Word of God. Acts chapter number 5. I mentioned it uh, Sunday night for a minute. Sister, Acts chapter number 5 starts out with a man and a woman that sold some land. And the Bible said they held part of the money back. And they went to the disciples and knocked on the door page. And they began to talk and they began to lie. And Ananias, the man, fell over dead. And Sapphira, come by after him. Doug and she fell over dead. And Peter said these words to him: Why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? They fell over dead. That's how serious it is to take the Holy Spirit. Now listen, He won't lie through you. If, if I'm in the Holy Ghost and I'm in the Spirit of God, I will not tell a lie. It'll be the truth because it'll be the Word. He will not lie through you and He will not lie for you. Make sure you understand this, that the Holy Spirit of God... Please look up here this morning. Give me your attention for just a minute. The Holy Spirit will not lie for you before God. He won't go and say something that's not right. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. He will only tell the truth through you and for you. He will not say that you're something you're not. He can't. He is all truth. That is the Holy Spirit. He is truth. He is power. He's love. He's what's inside of you. Amen. Today that shows you. You are a child of God. If He was not truth, if there was one fraction of Him that was anything but truth, you could not put holy before Spirit. Amen. He is the Holy Spirit. Uh, he is the leader of our souls and our bodies. The Bible said, Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He leads you. He takes you where you need to go. Has anybody ever been led by the Spirit? Somewhere? Philip went to an old eunuch one day, led to the Spirit. He was sitting there reading Isaiah 53. Philip said, do you know what you read? He said, how could I let some man show me? The Spirit led him. As soon as he got saved, he got baptized. Leader. Philip run so fast, he went about 90 miles in 15 minutes. The Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. The Spirit, Holy Spirit will never brag on Himself. He'll never brag on you. He'll brag on Jesus and He'll brag on God. He'll talk about Jesus. He'll talk about God. That's it. Let me tell you though about being led by the Spirit. Or being used by the Spirit. It ain't even led by the Spirit. This was an accident. This is how the Spirit will work. The Holy Spirit. God moves in miracles today just like He did in the Bible. Do you believe that? I believe it. it ain't, the last period ain't put in that book in, a, in what's happened yet. It's been in the book, but it ain't happened yet. So it's still functioning. I believe everything in that Bible is still functioning, working, powerful. The Holy Ghost. One time, sit back and just listen. We'll talk for a minute. This is amazing, Ben. I was preaching a revival in Sparta. Anybody know where Sparta is? 
It's three days on horseback. <laughs> we were late, and I don't, I cannot stand to be late. I hate it. I hate it. Kelly was out of gas. I can't stand to be out of gas. I hate it. I hate it. I, my truck is never out of gas. I'm above half a tanker. I'm getting some. Amen. This is probably 15 years ago. This is the Holy Spirit. We were on our way to preach revival. I'm trying to be spiritual. You know how it is. I want to be spiritual that day. I've got to preach an important message. Then I'm trying to be in the Spirit of God. I've studied. I've prayed. I want to be in the Spirit when I walk through the door of that church, right? The gas light's on. We're late. We have no choice but to try to go on faith and run out of gas or stop. So we have to turn left and go all the way up through West Jefferson for some reason. And we pull into that serve co. You know what I'm talking about. And I get out to go in and pay for the gas and I hear preaching. And I'm like, what is that? And Doug, there's an old car sitting there, and it was packed plumb to the rim with a man's stuff. And I walked by the window, and I, I listened to that, and I thought, what am I hearing? And the guy had his window down, and I said, sir, are you all right? He's sitting there crying. He said, no. He said, I've lost my home. I've lost my family. He said, I'm ready to give up. And I said, well, there's hope in the Lord. And he said, that's what that preacher on this CD just said. He said, there's hope in the Lord. And I said, there is, Miss Reba. We stood there for a few minutes, and that man got saved. Amen. But let me tell you something. You know what the amazing thing about the CD he was listening to was? It was me preaching from this church. I had never seen that man or heard of that man, never been around that man. But the Holy Ghost of God, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, in the middle of the air, amen, was turning things, Denise, that only God can do. Amen. That's God. That's not us. That's God. Amen. amen. Only God, through the Holy Ghost, that big old thing that does that big old person, he is a person. He is a Him that dwells inside of you. Amen. If you're saved, you have it too. Let Him have reign and freedom in your life. Let Him control you and lead you and guide you. Amen. He is a, a spirit of truth. Amen. Are you alright? It takes truth and conviction I don't know how long I'm going to preach. Five minutes to an hour. Boy, I'm going to stop when I'm done, but I don't even know when that will be. Truth and conviction is how you get saved. Now, I want you to listen very close. And I wasn't planning on preaching this right here, but I got to. It's him again. You can't get saved without the Holy Spirit. He must draw you. When the sister come running to get saved Sunday, it was the Holy Spirit. Now listen, He came to you, right? And He showed you you were lost. He came to you and, and, and blew you up inside for a minute and said, you're lost, you need to be saved. Okay, He did His part. He came in somehow. It's amazing that He can do this. He came in for just a second, but He couldn't stay. He couldn't stay because he hadn't been invited. He couldn't live and dwell because you hadn't asked him to come in. But he come knocking. And he come and showed you for just a minute. This is amazing how powerful and loving God is. He came and said, listen, I want to be part of your life. And he come knocking and saying, let me in. Now listen, you cannot even be saved unless God gives you the measure of faith. He said he must 
give you the measure of faith. So He's doing all the work. He's come, He's knocked, He's given, He's granted you the measure of faith. Now you had one decision to make. Do I receive Him or no? When you stepped out and said, I need to be saved, I believe I listened to you pray. I thought, I wish I could go back and do it just like she did. I see hear some people get saved. And Matt, when they pray, I think, I wish I could go back in time, turn back time and do it just like they did because it sounds so good. But you cannot get saved without the drawing of the Holy Spirit. So listen, this is perfect example because we saw it happen. He knocked, he asked. Then he came up here and waited on you. Then when you came, And you said, okay, and you ask, he pulled the old person out, that old dead person that carried you around for however old you are. He pulled them out, laid them in the grave, took his Holy Spirit, revived a brand new person, gave you a mind of Christ and a life through him and for him, and said, now you're a new person, stood you up, amen. That is the Holy Spirit. If you've never been saved, that's what must happen. He must come draw you. He must give you a measure of faith. And then He will wait on you. And if you will receive Him, He will. He will in no wise cast you out. He will save you. Hallelujah. I don't know whether to quit right there or keep going. I don't, I don't know. I'll keep going. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Let's keep going. Let's go for a minute. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. If you got Him in you, y'all would be excited. I would like to preach on the fruits of the Spirit. I'd like to preach on the gifts of the Spirit. But you've got to know who the Spirit is before you can understand any of that other stuff. If you don't know who He is and you just know what He does... If you just, did you hear that? If you don't know who he is, but you just know what he does, he's a stranger. Did you hear that? If you just know what he does and you don't know who he is, he's just a stranger to you. But if you know who he is and you know what he does, you've got something big right there. Hallelujah. The Bible said. After ye receive the Holy Ghost. After you be endued with power. Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Danny, after the Holy Ghost has come up on you, you receive power. There's power in the Holy Ghost of God. Now, He's not going to give somebody that's not ready for power, power. He's not going to send one of these little ones out here with the power, amen, of God to do whatever because they don't understand it. But after you have received the Holy Ghost, after He's come upon you, you receive power. That's a big deal. I believe you will receive power to speak life. I believe you'll receive power To heal the sick. I believe you'll receive power to prophesy. He said, in the last days, thus saith the Lord. What? That He'll pour out His Spirit upon who? Upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And your young men will uh, see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. I think that's what the Holy Ghost does. Amen. That's what He says He does. But right here's the power that we need. Listen to me real close this morning. How many of you have read the whole book of Acts? I want all those powers, Ben. I want them. I've saw them. I've walked in a lot of them. I know it's real. I can testify. If you want to talk after church, come let's talk. Amen. I will not lie about the Holy Ghost and He will not lie about Himself. God forbid. That's blasphemy. In the book of Acts, Doug, every time those men something would happen Jeremy every time they would get in the spirit of God 
let's take Paul for instance, and I'm going to give you this, and we'll go home in just a minute. Paul got stoned, and they left him dug for dead, left him for dead. And the, he had to have help getting out of there. In other words, people went, and they got him under the arms, and they carried him. And then you know what it said? And then it said he was found in the city preaching the gospel. What? Not at the hospital. Not somewhere with the blues or bummed out. But he was found in the city preaching the gospel. And all through the book of Acts. All through. They were put into prison. They locked Peter and John up in prison. And, and they break out of prison. You'd think surely they'd run. And they go and they say, you ain't going to believe this. But they're down there at the gate. And they're preaching in the name of Jesus again. Amen. That's what the Holy Ghost of God does. He goes and he brags on Jesus. Amen. That is the true power of God. Amen. If we had a dead body right here and I could lay hands on it and say, Arise and walk in the name of the Lord. And they was lost and they left here lost. It wouldn't do no good. If we could touch the blind and they could see or the deaf and they could hear. And they left here lost. It would do no good. But the very power of the Holy Ghost of God is the preaching and the calling of Jesus. Amen. That is what it's all about. He cannot lie. He'll always point to Jesus. Amen. Man, I've got a lot of stuff wrote down right here. I want you to hear this this morning. How many of you have ever been to the point where you've been so down and out that you couldn't even pray? The Bible said the Spirit would make intercession. Miss Betty, that He can even understand or pray through you through your groans. right when you read about grieving and quenching the holy spirit he talks about get rid of all envy all malice all hatred get rid of all that stuff but see the holy spirit can't walk and function in those things that is the very opposite of the holy spirit hatred is the opposite he's love malice and, and envy and strife that's all the very opposite of god it quenches the holy spirit but he said in the Spirit, he didn't say hard times wouldn't come, but he said when they do, that he will pray through you. Hopefully Wednesday night or next Sunday, whenever my turn is again, I'm going to bring a lot of scriptures and just read them for you. Because the Bible talks, Randall, when the Holy Ghost come upon them and opened their minds to the Word, to the Scriptures, and to God. I feel like Danny were here and we're trying to worship. And he said, those that worship me will worship me what? In spirit and in truth. There's those two words again. And I feel like we're trying to walk. And you walk in the what? But I feel like if we don't know the spirit, Doug, if we don't understand the spirit, now we're not going to understand everything he's doing. That's not what he said to do. But if we don't walk in it and function in it, We're not going to do anything for God. A revival will be this right here. It will be a body of Christ functioning under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear me? It will be the body of Christ. That's us. Functioning under the calling and anointing of the Holy Spirit. That means we'll be led by the Spirit. That means Paige will follow the Spirit. That means we'll do what the Spirit says. We'll talk to who He says to talk to. We won't talk to who He says not to talk to. We'll go where He says go and we'll end up doing what He wants. And then He'll do what we can't do. He'll go. Does anybody know what song you were singing when sister got saved? Nope. Do you even know? Don't matter, does it? Because it wasn't them. Hello. It was this. If it was them, you'd still be lost as a ball in high weeds. Because they might sing the same song next Sunday. 
but God, the Holy Spirit, said what He can do and how He can change and how He can affect your life. Honey, if you'll get a hold of it, if you'll study about it and read about it and try to learn and let Him have reign, I promise you it'll change you. Oh, I want to go. I want to go places I shouldn't even go about it right now. Cause simply, maybe I ain't ready, or maybe you ain't ready. There's a lot to it. There's a lot of power, but you got to start on the little end to get to the big end. You got to have what the sister had. She don't come in here this morning thinking she knows everything about it. She just knows that it got her. But here's the good thing. I'm done right now. I'm done. He don't lie. He don't lie. If he's telling you you're lost, you're lost. If he's telling you you're his, you're his. If he's telling you you need to do something, you need to do something. Amen? If he's quenched inside of you, if he's quenched inside of you, or he's grieved inside of you, Lord in mercy, you need to take care of that. If you got hatred, bitterness, malice, envy, Strife, ill will toward your brother. Listen, she come up here in spite of what they're singing. But if you can't come up here because they're singing, you're out of the will of God. If somebody over on this side or this side can affect you from serving God, you're out of the will of God. You've quenched the Holy Spirit and you can't function in the power of God until you get that out of your life. Amen. If what somebody, I heard somebody say, I can't go there, uh, it's because of other people, I can't do this. Honey, you're out of the will of God. You're quenching the Spirit of God because of something that's buried inside of you. The Holy Spirit and that Spirit cannot function together, brother. They just can't. They just can't. Like Alan said the other day, if if you're zigging and they're zagging, it ain't gonna work. We gotta zig together and zag together. Talking about a school of fish. That big fish comes through, brown, and what it does, it gets one to zig while the other one zags and pow. Got him. The Holy Spirit. Listen, the Bible talks. I gotta quit. Tell me to stop in just a minute. The Bible said we're knitted together, right? Knitted. It uses the word knitted together tightly. When you get out of the function of that spirit, you get separated. You get in trouble. You get weak. And then you get got. Amen? This morning I want you to listen. And I think I preached every other verse and every other thought that I had this morning. No rhyme or reason, just God. If you know there's something in your life, maybe He's coming, He's knocking that time saying, I want to come in. I want to save you. I'll meet you at the altar. I'll meet you there. He's coming, He's giving you that measure of faith. You ought to step out. And maybe He's coming and He's, he's got more for you. Don't leave it. Don't leave it. My prayer, Julie, my prayer is this. Recognize the blessings that's in front of me through the Holy Spirit. Renee, just recognize it and grab it. You know why we had service, I'm done, why we had service last Sunday night? I absolutely did not want to come back to church Sunday night. I didn't know the Calvary Reflection was going to come up and sing. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know. I didn't know. But it was like every time I looked over Miss Betty, I could just vision something laying there beside of me and God was saying, recognize it and pick it up. Recognize it and pick it up. Don't leave your blessings laying there. Amen? Don't leave your blessing laying somewhere. Recognize it this morning. Stand to your feet. I'm done. Denise, if you come, just play something on the piano. Listen to the Spirit of God, whatever.